Why does a hot can implode in cool water? <laughs> ah, fitting. It's called bang. Slim Dog Science with me, Caleb Flynn. Subscribe, like, comment, hit that bell. So our first way that we're gonna look at this is with the can unheated, just sitting on the counter. We have a certain number of gas molecules pushing on the inner wall surfaces, and we have the same number of gas molecules hitting the outer wall surfaces, and those outer ones are coming from the atmosphere gas molecules in the air all around us. So the collisions on the inside can surfaces are the same as the collisions on the outside can surface. And I'll just note this can is open here, and since the collisions are equal in and out, the pressure's equal. So when we think about pressure, uh, pressure's all about how many collisions from molecules in the gas phase are occurring in our can here. And if we put a thermometer in the can, the temperature inside the can is the same as the temperature outside. And what's that mean? The speed of the molecules inside the can is the same. So temperature is all about speed. Temperature has to do with gas molecule speed. So if collisions are the same, pressure is the same, speed's the same, temperature is the same, what's going on with our volume? The volume is constant. It's unchanging. You open up a can, it doesn't change volume on the counter. Then we start heating it up. What happens when we heat it up to collisions, pressure, temperature, and speed? Well, the first thing that we note is when you heat it up, the inside of the can gets really hot. So now we have a big temperature inside the can and the same temperature outside, so comparatively, the outside's cooler. So we have our same number of gas molecules just banging into the outside of the can here, still have our four. So collisions on the outside are constant. But what happened to the inside? Because when we look at the can, the volume stays constant. It's not moving. And if we still had the same number of gas molecules on the inside, the volume would get bigger, right? Because those four gas molecules would be moving faster and they'd make that can want to explode. But the top's open. So the pressure inside is equal. The pressure inside is equal to pressure out. So what must have happened is we have fewer gas molecules. We'll just draw one that's moving faster and banging into the walls more often. So one gas molecule is now balancing the four exterior, which means a few of the other gas molecules, we'll draw the three, had to have left. And that allowed the pressure to be equal. So now we have our one gas molecule on the inside, same amount on the outside, banging into the outer walls, and we flip it into this water. And what happens? Once we flip it in, we think about, we have the atmosphere pushing on top of the water, pushing down on the water. We have our one little gas molecule that could keep that water from going in, pushing down against it. And let's think about energy for a moment. So the high temperature inside of the can is gonna to wanna to flow to the low temperature outside cool water. And the same with our gas molecule, it's gonna give its high energy to the low energy water, which is gonna make our gas molecule slow down. So the temperature inside is gonna to get to where it equals the outside. So the speed inside will equal the speed outside. So our gas molecule now is gonna have less collisions inside than the outside. It can't collide with all the walls and keep the water out the same. So the pressure inside then will decrease. We'll have a greater pressure outside as our one little gas molecule there slows down and that's gonna make the volume want to decrease inside the can. So our same number of gas molecules pushing on the outside of the can and we have our one little gas molecule now, and the volume decreased, the can crushed, and the temperature we see is equalized inside and out, and the speed is the same of our gas molecules inside and out, and look what happened. Since the walls are closer, our little gas molecule can bang into the walls more easily. It doesn't have as far to travel, so the collisions inside and outside are equal, and if collisions are equal, the pressure's equal, and that's all because the volume decreased, and the water also entered inside of our can, which made it so the gas molecule didn't have to travel as far, and as that water entered, the, the gas molecule just bounces around and it can hit the walls more often and that all works to increase collisions increasing the pressure so our decrease in volume increased the pressure our one little gas molecule could collide more often increasing the pressure so decrease in volume 
increases the pressure. So we had same number of collisions to start, collisions, pressure, temperature, speed, all the same to start, cans not changing. And then what do we do? We heated up the can. So now we had some of our gas molecules leave and we had fewer gas molecules moving faster that all balance the exterior collisions to keep pressure constant. And then we had energy leave the system. And so our gas molecule slowed down and it couldn't quite balance all the exterior collisions. And so water entered and the can crushed and that decrease in volume worked to increase the pressure. I mean, if I missed something important, let me know down in those comments. Maybe you'll get that in later. And uh, hopefully crushing cans is a little more exciting for you now. Bonus experiment time. We'll heat up this bang can, quickly remove the hot water, flip the bang can in, and then you explain down in those comments why you think whatever happened, happens. Let's flip this bang can now into our boiling water. Nothing's happening. Whoa, what is going on? All the water's going away. What is happening? Oh man, look at this. The water's all going away. The can's not crashing. You gotta try that one. That's pretty cool. Let me know what you think. Till next time.